Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw, the 25th of November.1960. Seeing one's own death is vipassana. Sayadaw gave a meditation instruction here. The language he used was unusual. He said when the observing mind and mental states arose, we could see the disappearing or anaka. A mind born and it dies, and then another mind arises again and dies again. Two minds and two mental states can't arise together at the same time. So when a mind arises we observe and it's not there anymore. When the observing mind comes in, it dies already. At that moment we are alive with the observing mind, Magga. When another mind arises, the observing mind also disappears. So there is no observer only the observed. Vipassana is seeing the death with the living mind. If you could see the death with the living mind, then the Buddha had arisen. Without it no Buddha arose then it becomes the path of ignorance condition kamic formation. So what really make the mind and body process on and on? Sayadaw sometimes in some of his talks mentioned about the hell beings suffer in hell. They die instantly and born again instantly on and on until their kamas are finishing for the hell. Some Peters never had a drop of water to drink for their thirsty. They lived for a very long period of times between each Buddha. They continued to survive by food of Kama, Kamahara. Mind is the creator because it creates Kama. Even before the being dies the results are starting to materialize. There was a sutta about Nandiya Upasaka. Because of his good Kama's celestial mansions were starting to appear in the Tavatimsa heaven even before he died. One time then, Maha Moggallana visited there and found out some beautiful mansions with celestial nymphs were waiting for someone to arrive there. They requested then, Maha Moggallana to send the message for Nandiya Upasaka, DHP 219-220, DHA.ie.290FF, VV, PTS, number 862. There was a remarkable parallel in a modern-day story. This time do not with the outside objects but with the materialization of a human embryo by the kamic energy. This was in Ajahn Mun's biography about an elderly nun. See Ajahn Mun biography, The Legacy, PGS 416 to 418. Human ducker can't be compared to the ducker of the hells and hungry ghosts. By reaching the Sotapati Magga, the knowledge of stream entry, Dukkha only left for seven drops of water, compare with the whole drops of water in a huge lake, a cubic lake which is 50 by 50 by 50 yojanas each side with full of water, one yojana equals 8 or 13 miles, from Saka Samyutta. Therefore, you all have to put full force energy for practice. Only by practice to get the Vipassana Magga, insight knowledge, that you'll get the supramundane knowledge, Lokutara Magga. Vipassana knowledge is the cause and supramundane knowledge is the result. It mentioned in the Susima Sutta, Vipassana knowledge is seeing the impermanence and supramundane knowledge is seeing the ending of the impermanence or impermanent process. Therefore, only you can see the impermanence, then you can see the end of it. By killing the Kalesa worms with insight knowledge and you get the light of supramundane knowledge. Seeing one's own kanda is vipassana knowledge. When the first mind is arising and you are alive with the first mind. If the second mind arises, the first mind dies away and you are alive with the second mind again. You have to know in this way. Therefore, contemplation of one's own death is vipassana. Discerning one's own death is vipassana. We don't see the numerous momentary arising deaths that craving, tana, arises, and wants to become human beings or heavenly beings. By not seeing one's own death, and ignorance, craving, clinging and action continue. In this way Dukkha machine is going on and on. People are alive without knowing is like a blind man walking along the way. Seeing the death is going on the right path, and without it on the wrong path. How to see one's own death is the best way of seeing. Don't see it in the way of fright. Seeing it as a stranger, then it's equal to the word of Prato, Burmese, stranger or alien, 
Pali, Parijana. You cannot stop it happens, so looking at it as a stranger. In this way is no fear and fright. This is also seeing it as not self, anatta. In this way of seeing and vipassana knowledge is becoming mature and developing. And then become don't want to associate or living with the stranger. It makes samadaya tana in the heart becomes thinner. By knowing it as not mine, wrong view and doubt fall away. Strangers are not coming anymore, and free from the dead ones. And then not seeing one's own death anymore is nibbana. This is nibbana element. Sayadaw continued the Susima story. Practice with the insight knowledge beforehand and then will follow by the path knowledge. Vipassana nana right pointing arrow maga nana. In most of the suttas the Buddha taught about three knowledges, but here in Susima Sutta mentioned these two knowledges. Dharma talks by Mogik Sayadaw, the 6th of December 1960. With faith transcends wrong view. Sayadaw based this talk on the Alavaka Sutta of Samyutta Nikaya, SN.10.12. Alavaka Sutta or I.213FF, and Sutta Nipata, SNI, 10, or PP.31-3. It was an interesting Sutta and traced its source to the previous Buddha Kasapa. He only used two factors from the Sutta, faith, Sada, and mindfulness, Sati. Only with faith, sadha, people can start to practice and realize first nibbana and their faiths become fixed. This stage transcends wrong view and doubt and faith becomes unshakable. Maybe in the beginning it needs some trust and interest in the Buddha's teaching to start for it. A few years ago there was a book in the West called, Buddhism Without Faith. Many scholars criticized this book. Buddhism Without Blind Faith is the Buddhist faith and encourages the freedom of inquiry. Without any faith and trust, nobody will have the interest to study and practice, but you need to have an open mind. All the Buddha's teachings could be verified by oneself because it came from the direct experiences of the Buddha and the natural phenomena and laws of nature. Sayadaw gave a very good analogy for sadha. A man wants to dig out the root of a tree has to use a tool. The root of the tree is like Dithi, wrong view, and it connects with the water of Dugati, the four painful rebirths. The branches are like Tana and Mana, craving and conceit, which grow out from the root. The tool is Pana, wisdom, and the hands are faith, Sada. Without the hands the tool can't dig out the root. Sayadaw also emphasized the importance of Sati and it was leading all the other factors. Faith can transcend the lower round of existences, i.e., the four painful rebirths. With sati can transcend all the upper samsara, i.e., from the human existence to the highest Brahma gods. Closing square bracket. The Buddha taught Alavaka in the discourse that with faith could close the doors of four painful rebirths. Because of wrong view beings fall into the four painful rebirths, with faith can cross over the flood of wrong view, Dithi Ogha. You have to believe that it can enter the stream of the path, Sotapati Magga. Why do you want to practice the Dharma? You have faith in the Buddha's words and also the words of the teacher, so you are practicing it. He had been said that you must discern impermanence, and if you practice accordingly will discern it. You discern it because you have faith and practice it. After discerning impermanence do you have any idea of this is my permanent mind process? Wrong view takes it as permanence. In practice let faith is leading you. Another point the Buddha taught was Apamada diligence with mindfulness can transcend the four floods, ogres. Mindfulness is greater than faith. Whatever is arising, mind states, feelings etc. Watching with mindfulness. You also will see the cessation of Dharma if you are seeing the arising Dharma. Watching at the candle light and you'll see it going out. For example, mind with greed is arising and you are watching with mindfulness and it's passing away. At that time is there any clinging come in? Without it you are free from the flood of sensuality, Kamoga. 
By watching and observing the mind and body phenomena and seeing impermanence, do you want any kind of becoming? Then you are free from the flood of becoming. Bhavoga. If you are let the mindfulness dharma leading you and wisdom. Panna. Will follow behind it. Mindfulness knows the arising dharma and wisdom knows the anaka. All these knowing are leading by mindfulness. Therefore the Buddha called it Satipatthana. The function and object of mindfulness. Dharma talks by Mogik Sayadaw. The 8th of December 1960. Time consuming and timeless, Kalika and Akalika. Sayadaw based this talk on Samidhi Sutta, Devata Samyata, SN1. 20. Bhikkhu Samidhi was handsome and lovely. A female earth deity, Bhuma Devata, who saw him in the light of early dawn fell in love with him and planned to seduce him. Samidhi insisted that he would not abandon the monk's life for the sake of sensual enjoyment. He explained to her. The Blessed One has stated that sensual pleasure are time-consuming, full of sufferings, full of despair, and the danger in him is still greater. While this Dharma is directly visible, immediate, a Kaliko, inviting one to come and see, applicable, to be personally experienced by the wise. The Dharma is well expounded by the Blessed One plus directly visible, experienced by the wise, are the six attributes of the Dharma. The deity did not understand what he said and asked for more explanation. He could not answer and suggested her to ask the Buddha. Later the Buddha answered for her and she entered the stream at the end of the talk, became a Sotapanna. It did not mention what happened to Samidhi. Here one of the interesting points was unwholesome intention turned into wholesome intention and leading to enlightenment by meeting a spiritual friend. Here Sayadaw used these two words, Kalika, time-consuming, and Akalika, timeless or immediate, to give this talk. There are two kinds of Kala, time, Kalika, time-consuming, and Akalika, immediate. Kalika is about family and wealth. Akalika is about insight practice. Another way is working for defilement and killing the defilement. People are following Kalika and enjoying in it will encounter great suffering, worry and anxiety. If you do Akalika all these will end. Sayadaw taught them how to use Akalika before and then Kalika, as an example, if you want to drink water. First contemplate impermanence of the wanting mind, desire, and then drink the water, etc. This is the right way to do things. The Buddha gave this talk to Samidhi, including the female deity. A deity came to Samidhi and said to him, Now you are in your youth and should indulge yourself in Kalika, i.e., sensual pleasure, and do the Akalika, spiritual practice, later. Samidhi answered to her, I don't know the time of my death, the type of illness for dying and the place where I have to leave my body. And then also I don't know where I'll take my rebirth after death. So I have to do the Akalika before. The deity asked him again and he couldn't answer it. So he suggested her to ask the Buddha. The Buddha said that people took Kalika as importance was they were not clear about between concept and reality. They took the mind and body phenomena as me, mine, man and woman. So they suffered from it. Human beings end up in concepts or relative truth that they do all sorts of worldly things, having families, bringing up children etc. If you don't clear about concept and reality, there will be no vipassana contemplation. Therefore find out the reality and contemplate impermanence. At the end of the teaching the deity entered the stream. If you condense the five kandas only have the mind and body. Condense the mind and body again only impermanence. Impermanence is the truth of suffering. If you follow to the ending of dukkha it becomes akalika, timelessness, i.e., nibbana. Dharma talks by Mogik Sayadaw, the 9th of December 1960. Checking for wrong views. It is the view of eternalism, sasata dithi, to want enjoyment in next life after this life. You will receive it if you have done it. This person will go there and enjoy the result is eternalism, sasata. 
after you have done and nothing is happening again. It's just only functional, career matter. It's the view of annihilationism, Akeda Dithi. View it as there is no any connection. But for fully enlightened beings such as Buddha, Parcheka Buddha and Arahant, it's only functional. Everybody has one of these views. With Sasata view can't realize Nibbana, but can arrive to good destination, Sugati. Akeda view even can't arrive to Sugati, but to the plains of misery, a pire boom. These dharmas are for inner investigation. You can't realize Nibbana if you don't give up these wrong views and even do the practice. They forbid the path and fruit knowledges. Magga and Phala. If you teach Nibbana Dharma to Sasata person he doesn't like it. He is hiding himself in the round of existence. Don't want to listen about the cessation of life. They like to realize Nibbana slowly. Some people are very poor and have a lot of suffering and sorrow in lives that death is the only solution to them. Their philosophy is only born once and only dies once and prefers the cessation of life. So they are Akeda people. They want to listen about the cessation of life. Both of these people are wrong. Sasata people don't like Nibbana because of the craving for becoming Bhavatana. Wrong view is preventing them to realize it. They love to listen the enjoyment of life in the Sutta discourses. For Akeda people, when they listen Vipassana Dharma, they prefer the cessation of life without understanding the cessation of Dukkha. Both of them are not in the middle way, but inclining towards each polarity, i.e., eternalism and annihilationism. I will talk about their nature. Sasata people believe in doing wholesome actions and abstain from unwholesome action in this life and after life. It's difficult to transcend Dukkha for them if the Buddha and disciples taught them Saka Dharma, because they take enjoyment in the becoming. Akeda people believe in this life and next life. My understanding of Akeda view is that they do not believe in after life. Maybe here Sayadaw referred to some Buddhists who had Akeda view and prefer the cessation of life. They do not do wholesome actions, whereas dare to do unwholesome actions. But they could quickly renounce their wrong views if they had the chances to listen to the teachings of the Buddha and disciples and then they worked hard to realize Nibbana quickly. The one who is in the middle way has these knowledges. He has only five candors and these are impermanence, anaka, suffering, dukkha, not-self, anatta, and foulness, asubha, dharma and truth of dukkha. By analyzing the candas with knowledge and practice we'll see their passing away with blips. By seeing the arising dharma is free from the annihilationism, akeda, and seeing the passing away dharma is free from eternalism, sasata. The person who is in the middle way is free from both wrong views. He is not accepting the views of permanence and extinction. In the world, loka, there are the only existence of the arising dharmas and the passing away dharma. There are no eternal and annihilated phenomena. People had sasata view before because they didn't see the passing away dharmas, and on the other hand they had akeda view because they didn't see the arising phenomena. They didn't have these insight before. Therefore only by discerning impermanence, they will be in the middle way. For example, you can use your fingernail to scratch on your arm. You will find the feeling arising and disappearing. The object of contemplation is impermanent and the knowledge which know the object is also impermanent, here feeling and the knowing mind. This is the main reason why I myself had taught you for many years about these things. Only by discerning impermanence before that will be followed by disenchantment after. It will be followed with pleasure if you don't discern it. After the disenchantment do you have any desire for it? Seeing impermanence is the knowledge of as it really is, Yathabhuta Nana, the knowledge which drives away Sasata and Akeda. Continue to contemplate and becoming disenchantment towards the phenomena is Nibida Nana, disenchantment of the arising Dharma and the passing away Dharmas, which Sasata and Akeda cannot close near to the mind. This knowledge is beneficial to the path knowledge. 
by disenchanting to the candors is also to all the candors of 31 realms of existence. It is also the knowledge of disenchantment to the cemetery. If you have the candor you have to look for a cemetery to bury it. When arriving to this knowledge even you are disenchanting to someone you want to associate or live with this person. Then the eight path factors arise, and the candor disappears. Dukkha Saka disappears and Niroda Saka arises. This is the deathless Nibbana. If you know only Dukkha ceases, not a being, and free from Akeda Dithi. You should have sustained attention on the Kandas. From the time of discerning impermanence and can make a decision that you are at the entrance door of Nibbana. But don't be satisfied with it and continue for contemplation. Becoming disenchantment you are closer to Nibbana city. Continue to contemplate until penetrate the arising Dukkha and the passing away Dukkha, then the five Kandas cease. Dukkha ceases is Nibbana. From the time you are discovering Anaka and making the decision that you will realize Nibbana. Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw, the 9th of December 1961. Wrong views and characters. Wrong views come from inversions, Vipalasa. Someone with the Sasata nature is taking enjoyment in the life of existence. So it's far from Nibbana. Someone with Akeda nature appreciates Nibbana. With Sasata does not like Nibbana. Akeda prefers to be nothing is happening again. They believe in born only once and die only once in lifetime. It doesn't make any difference to them. I urge people who have these wrong views must practice for themselves to see the reality. The reality and the knowing have to fit together. The body whenever you observe, it exists only Anaka, Dukkha, Anatta and Dukkha Saka. If the reality of the body and the knowing mind fit together, it becomes Kakamanto C.A. Pasanti, the person with eyes can see it. You were born with blindness and will die with blindness. This was said by the Buddha in the Udana Pali. Most Buddhists die without seeing impermanence, but they know only born once and die once in one lifetime. These people born in the darkness and die in the darkness. They can't revolt the inversions, vipalasa, that they are crazy and blind. This body exists as impermanent phenomena and not seeing this is blind. But we take the not existing things as my son, my wife, etc. Is crazy. So don't want to become a crazy and blind corpse. If you want, then the king doesn't go to the heaven and the monk doesn't fly up to the heaven. These usages in Burmese language are respectful ways of saying about the king and the monk are passing away. Both of them suffer in woeful plain, a payaboom, because of wrong views, and dive into the earth, i.e., hell. And then Sayadaw told the story of a group of blind Brahmins and an elephant. All of them didn't know the whole elephant. In the same way human beings only know the outer forms as son, wife, etc. But they don't know what happened inside and then die. They die as crazy and blind people. Even you are a two-rooted person, if you can practice and discern impermanence, then you will finish your goal in next life. Regarding two-rooted person in some of Sayadaw's talks, he can't discern Anaka. Maybe it referred to the highest levels of Anaka or some of his listeners were already discerned Anaka. So he encouraged them to continue their practice. Anyhow yogis should not concern about the Dharma duty or procedure. He should concern only practice rightly and checking his mistakes and correcting them. If you don't work for practice and next life also will born in the darkness and die in the darkness again. You are not only living in the darkness but also crazy. Without cure your blindness and craziness, even a Brahma god can become a pig and an universal monica dog, anything can happen to a worldling. Everything could happen to a living being before, but except Nibbana. It is because samsara or the round of rebirths without beginning is very long to all beings. A person not in the middle way is going randomly and in the extreme. The two extremes are not free from aging, sickness and death and also can't find the way of freedom. Without cure the blindness and craziness will be never in the middle way. 
Beings are moving like an earthworm. A chicken is waiting in front of it. It doesn't know about this and going towards the chicken. Therefore it becomes the food for the chick. In the same way living beings are eaten by the king of the death. You can smile only when you are in the middle way. You can smile after seeing impermanence, disenchantment and the ending of the conditioned phenomena. Without these is only the smiling of a blind and crazy person. Inversions of wrong view, Dithi Vipalasa, overpower us that we are always going towards the path of death. If you are looking at it with knowledge and this candor is dying for many times within a day. So, if someone became a Sotapanna and the Buddha referred to him as a Loko Udapadi, attained the knowledge of light, it will only become bright by getting the seed of path knowledge. After discerning Anaka, you get the knowledge in accordance with the truth, Saka Anulomika Nana. It will see the real Dukkha when this knowledge becomes mature. It's difficult to talk people to appreciate these things. What they prefer is the path to good rebirths, because they have inversions with them. If your eyes can see, then you are in the middle way. You discern impermanence and it becomes the seed of a noble being, Arya. Most of us took rebirths as animals in our past lives, because human existences were difficult to obtain. Some yogis could discern their past lives also supported this point. Therefore the Buddha said that we should be disgusted and loath to this kanda. If you have the kanda, and even will not kill by others, must bite to death by the four snakes within it. And then Sayadaw mentioned how the four great elements changed in the body and led to deaths. The Buddha explained the characters of blind and crazy people. People held the view of permanence, sasata dithi, believe in next life and the result of good and evil. Prefer to do good and afraid of evil. Maybe you all think him as a moral person. Even if he meets a good teacher and will stay away from practice to realize Nibbana, there was a close disciple named Yumaya, a wealthy businessman. If he had the chance to meet Sayadaw would never stay longer, but only a few days for his talks. Sayadaw always asked him to stay longer for practice, but he neglected and died unexpectedly. These people, Sasata, even if they met the Buddha would not do it and not giving up their views. Their faults are small, but very difficult to transcend Dukkha, most of later Buddhists are this type. They have bhava tana and also encourage others to do the same. They are very reluctant to cut off the kanda process. They can't give up their sensual pleasure. They are gentle nature. Pretend to be moral people and don't want to come out from the round of existence, vata. Therefore it's difficult to help them for liberation. It's refine and difficult wrong view. It's like the head hairs of a small baby difficult to shave. The faults of Akeda people are heavy, but they are easily to give up their views. They believe in life and kama, but don't want to cultivate wholesome actions. They can do unwholesome things. They are easy to transcend Dukkha if they listen to talks and have faith in it. A very good example was Thi Ingu Sayadaw, also named Sayadaw Ashen, Ajahn, Okata, 1913-1973. He was a robber before. At the age of 46, he and his two followers robbed a house. The host knew about it and waited for them coming in. He was hit on the head with a long knife, but luckily he was wearing a hat. With the injury on the head, he and the others fled for their lives. After curing of his head injury, he had strong samvega. He took the book, which was about Song Lun Sayadaw's biography, and practice with him to the monastery in his village. Song Lun Sayadaw, 1888-1952, see Jack Cornfield's book, Living Buddhist Master. He took the nine precepts from the monk and closed himself in a room and practiced diligently. He had the strong determination of if he died let him die or let defilements died. After the sixth day, i.e., the 12th of September 1959, he experienced the first realization. Later he ordained as a monk and continued his practice. He finished his spiritual journey on the 20th of May 1961. He was a rough character, 
so his practice also very tough. The difficult things is most of you are Sasata people. If you have the eyesight both of these views will fall away. Akeda people even at the utmost can make a vow to become a Bodhisatta. Between the two views, Akeda person is closer to Nibbana. If you discern the impermanence of any Kanda both wrong views are gone. By seeing the arising is Akeda view, with the passing away is Sasata view and both will fall away. So discerning of impermanence is very beneficial. Go and study the Pali Suttas, most of them were talking about the rise and fall, Udaya and Vaya, i.e., impermanence. Why is that? Because it can revolt wrong views. Now, you have encountered the Buddha's teachings and must do this task. If not you will incline towards one side. Therefore I am asking you very often that. Do you discern impermanence? The same as do you have the eyesight yet? It doesn't mean to see all of them. Here feeling arises and then not here. Mind arises and then not here. Know the overview of it. These are important so that I have to tell you. Even in the past lives before, you might be met one of the Buddhas, but one of these wrong views prevented you from liberation. Distinguished by characters Sasata person is lust temperament, Raga Karita. Akeda person is hatred temperament, Dosa Karita. Whatever reason he will not do it if he doesn't want to do something. They are blunt people, if they have faith in the Dharma can give up their lives for the practice. They are sharp and Sasata people are soft. The Buddha taught a lot of things in details, and nothing was left behind. The Buddha never had a secret teaching or left some things behind for others to discover. Even in the end he allowed the monks to adopt some of the minor rules for the practice. All of you do understand the dependent arising very well. Sayadaw taught many years to them by using D. A. So don't doubt about yourself as in the middle way or not. Dependent arising teaches you the cause and effect of the impermanent phenomena. So you are in the middle way. Only you need to take care of it ending. The kanda, like the flowing water, is always in the impermanent states. It tells you only these. It's like as you are watching at one of the place of flowing river, the upper part of the water flowing in and the lower part of the water flowing away. The cessation of rise and fall, Udaya and Vaya, is Nibbana. Dharma Talks by Mogik Sayadaw, the 11th of December 1960. The Wise and the Fool. In this talk Sayadaw was using the first verse of the 38 highest blessings, Mangala Sutta for the teaching. Not to associate with fools, to associate with the wise, to honor those worthy of honor. A fool, bala, doesn't mean a person is foolish but for the dharma latency in the mind. In the same way, the wise, pandita, also is not a person but the dharma. The mind has ignorance, avidya, and becomes the fool. The mind has knowledge, vidya, and becomes the wise. We have to decide by the Dharma latency in the mind. Association with what is good becomes wise and bad becomes a fool. Not knowing is ignorance, avidya, and foolishness is sankhara, kamic formation. Take the five kandas as man and woman who are not exist is foolishness. Contemplation of the impermanence of the kanda is wise. By dying in this way is worthy of honor, puja ca puyanayanam. Someone dies by clinging to the kanda as a living being is the corpse of a fool. If you associate with impermanence will realize the incomparable Nibbana.